Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to ATM Spellbound. Uh, so since the last episode, I have been busy working. Uh, we're going to go downstairs in just a moment to our occultism area, because we're going to be working on a bunch of occultism-related stuff today. Uh, but I just want to quickly mention, I haven't actually, I was originally wanting to start the kitchen, uh, but that's where it's going to be. I haven't actually started it as of yet, but... Uh, it is going to be right over there so and the reason i haven't really got to work on it is because i spent all my time uh downstairs now also i did uh go ahead and start uh you can see i did switch over to the ring of prowess and i switched from our ornate ring so we did lose a little bit of armor toughness there uh but it was really the best ring uh, i felt like to switch because arcane reach is amazing arcane spoil pretty good i guess i could switch out that I'm actually going to switch that because I'm kind of at a point where I have so many spirits aside from like Eldritch and even Eldritch I have a lot of. Uh, so I wanted to switch over to the, uh, the confined brilliance and that way we could just, we could make bottles of enchanting very, very easily and uh, at least start stockpiling those so that we have them for later. But uh, I haven't actually used any, but we'll probably be doing some enchanting. But anyways, if we head on downstairs um my chipped tables just kind of piled up here uh, but you can see i have done a bit of work uh, i kind of started cleaning things up um on our ritual areas i did put up signs like strict wars higher binding just kind of as a reference because uh you know a lot of times when you are doing rituals and you're like oh this has to go in this one and i'm like uh, i don't remember which specific layout uh that i need to go to you know, uh, there's certain rituals that we're going to use consistently, like skeleton skulls, for example. Uh, those are going to be pretty easy to remember. Strigger's higher binding, pretty easy to remember. But some of them, uh, as I start adding more rituals, can become a little bit convoluted to try to find. So I did put up signs there. Um, if we continue on, uh, we're going to get into this little area today. Uh, over here, we have, uh, what's the name of this? This is uh, Fatma's Incentivized Attraction. Uh, I actually debated if I wanted to keep this set up because you only use it uh for the mirad crusher and it's probably not something we're going to need a lot of but i figured well if i'm going to set it up i might as well set it up somewhere permanent uh so that's all that that's really going to be for is that one ritual um if we continue on down now this you may have saw uh in the thumbnail for the last episode because i wanted to tease you guys just a little bit uh there but i've been working on this and on that note i hope everybody had a great thanksgiving um ours was it was great it was busy <laughs> a lot of running around uh, but i did kind of clean up this little area made it look nice i filled in uh if you recall i had the other ritual set up back here for the afrid i went ahead and tore that down because i think this room worked out better with just two rituals and i did kind of fill that area in with lunar cobblestone reason being uh, that way, if we spawn Wither Skeletons, it doesn't try to spawn mobs outside of this room because they all need to spawn uh, basically within this room. So I didn't want any spawning back in there, you know. Uh, but I did go through and added in our Malum Totem Poles. And these are Death, uh, the Rite of Death, which, of course, damages entities. That does include me. However, it's minimal damage that I can get out of pretty quickly. Uh, and I'll show you how we use that. It works like a charm, like an absolute charm. It's wonderful. Uh, so I did set up five of those kind of around the room, and I kind of turn on certain ones based on what I'm going to be summoning. And then, of course, I can turn them off after. Uh, now, back over here, we have uh, Azivius' Spectral Compulsion Ritual, and we also have AVR Circle back here. Uh, and I do have a right of celerity, so uh, that way we can just kind of move, because this area has gotten pretty big, so I'm probably going to set up a few more of those. I also did do some rich soil planters, just so we could grow our demon's dream seed. We don't really use these, but in case we ever need them, we've got a few of them set up, uh, and that way we have them available in our occultism area, and we don't have to waste farm space on something that we really never use. Um, so basically it has the effects of rich soil, doesn't need water it grows really fast um, and we can just of course right click to harvest the demon dream uh, beyond that we have a bit of storage back here we have storage over there but i'm not really using it at the moment uh, but we have storage for our 
chalks and things, our books. Uh, we do have a pedestal with our pickaxe. No, I'm just kind of to have it here in case we need to mine up more Isnium. I don't foresee it um, because we'll probably have uh, void miners up and going before we need that again, but uh, we do have that available. I'm also going to grab the us. This zombie might actually give us some pretty good loot because he was from a, uh, a mob box. So you'll have a little bit of uh, dungeon loot. And then back in here we have Ofix's Calling. Ofix Calling. Uh, ritual. Of course, a lot of this isn't built out. It takes a little while to build these areas out. And then we're going to have a few more rituals back in here. And something I was doing just to kind of keep track of things, since we don't have a clipboard, uh, I was just using a book and quill. And so these are the three other rituals that we're going to set up permanent spots for that we will be using. Uh, but we don't actually have to have them today, most likely. So we can wait on those. But they're going to go back over there. And that way we can kind of just walk through here and have all of our rituals uh, easily accessible uh, throughout this area. Now, one thing that I would like to do, let me actually grab a foliate book real quick. Uh, and we can quickly go over basically the building materials that we use. Uh, these are gloomy tiles. They do take phantom membrane to make. Uh, however, we can easily craft phantom membrane. And we actually had a bit of it just from witches from mob boxes. Uh, we also have andesite pillars. We have cracked tainted rock tile slabs. Once again, Malum blocks. I love Malum's decorative blocks so much. Uh, this is the other world wood uh, texture that I use for this. Uh, this is black terracotta that's been chipped. Uh, umber, polished umber. Uh, these are netherite or nether bricks. Uh, and then we have some chipped andesite. And down underneath these, I do have some chipped glowstone. So, uh, and then this is blackstone tiles. So, um, and that's pretty much the the main blocks that I used for this so I had a little bit of fun and it took it took a while in my test world figuring out the exact style and palette that I wanted for this area um, but I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out to be honest but okay so for example let's drop our foliate book it's gonna start summoning a possessed skeleton and then of course we have to drop down our chicken sacrifice it that's going to start the ritual of course and then what we do is we just run through and we activate these and then we get out of there and we give it a minute oh did it not accept my ritual for some reason some weird reason you can see the range on these is actually pretty big i have to stand back a little bit it's minimal damage to us uh but it's actually a lot of damage to the mobs i don't know why that did not take may have something to do with this sword because it works fine if we use our scythe so i'm going to assume that it's the sword uh, at work there there we go. Yeah, and it's starting to activate now. Uh, so let's just run through. Let's activate our totems. And we should be able to stand right up in here and watch it uh, without taking damage. That one in the center is basically just to keep mobs, uh, damage mobs that get up uh, kind of in this area. Just to be on the safe side. And the nice thing is with our boots, they don't really notice us. So we can actually just kind of hang out here and watch uh, our skeleton die. Uh, so there he is. You could say that one's uh, armored up, but it doesn't really matter. There we go. He's dead. Uh, and then all we got to do is take a little bit of damage, run in here, and just deactivate those. And there we go. There's our skeleton skull. And it works for this ritual, which of course summons a lot of mobs. But the nice thing is it does all targets in an area, not just one. So that it clears the room extremely quickly. And we don't have to worry about uh, dying or taking any damage, really. So... Uh, Super, super handy to say the least, and we can easily get our skeleton skulls and wither skeleton skulls. The only downside to it is it does not take into account all of our looting and stuff like that from our uh, our rings and stuff. So slight downside there, but if we're just after skeleton skulls, um, especially for the wild hunt, um, you know, I probably won't use it as much for this one, but for like the wild hunt, uh, there's a lot of mobs, so it does simplify things a lot. Uh, if nothing else, just to clear out the skeletons in the area, and then we can go in for the final kill, uh, final kills on the wither skeletons. So, but the very first thing that we're going to do is we are going to use our very first merit book um, to make a very fast crusher. Now, this does require a gas tier. There is a ritual with occultism to get that. However, we have the rune table, so aquatic spirits and eldritch spirits is going to get us gas tiers, super super cheap and almost to the point of being uh, free, of course. 
They're so cheap. Uh, soul stones. There we go. We'll activate our right. And. Oh, is it thinking that these are reversed, maybe? There we go. There's our gas tier. And we'll go ahead and put that in, and then uh, let's go ahead and grab ourselves a merit book. Got to get more uh, celerity set up, because every time I run by it, it's like, oh, speed. Uh, I just haven't gotten more of them set up yet. So we'll go ahead. Boom. It's going to start summoning a merit ore crusher. And it's going to take just a minute, uh, but while that's running, we are going to run up. We're going to grab ourselves some ore. You can see this takes a while. I've already got my ore. This isn't all my ore, but this is a good start. Just to kind of showcase the speed and power of this. Not to mention we're going to get better output, of course, from this. Um, it's not, it doesn't work with everything um, in my experience, but all this stuff should work except for ancient debris. I'm not for sure about ancient debris, to be honest. Oh, and my other ore crusher, he died from uh, these. <laughs> so I was, I was playing around with them. And, uh, yeah, he, he died from that, so if you're wondering where he went. Uh, by now, he probably would have decayed, but uh, he actually did die because these can affect him. So it's important to make sure that your spirits and stuff are away from this area. Uh, and that's the reason we won't be using a janitor in this room um, because of the simple fact that it's a little bit dangerous for them. There we go. Jar Loramad. We're going to grab him in our soul gem. Now, one thing to note is if stuff is in a soul gem, it's not going to decay like normal. Uh, but you can see very fast, he has no decay listed. That's because uh, the Merid Ore Crusher lasts forever. He lasts indefinitely. Um, he has 150 health. I mean, he is a tank. And this is just kind of to keep him in because sometimes they do like to wander, especially if ores nearby uh, drop that they can pick up. Sometimes they will wander a little bit. So we don't want that. Uh, but for example, if we throw in, say, iron ore, right into there, he's going to start basically eating that, consuming it, or whatever he does with it, and he's going to start breaking it down, and you can see the crushed, the iron dust getting dropped, and you'll notice that he's, every time he processes that, I'm getting six times ore processing. Uh, so it's better than mechanisms. Like I said, it doesn't necessarily work with every single ore, uh, but it is going to work with the majority of them. Um, and we're getting six times ore multiplication fairly quickly, right? So uh, this is kind of where the mod starts being a little bit broken in power, a little bit OP, uh, this in storage and void mining. Because this one guy lasts forever. He takes no input and he just six times multiplication of ores. So very, very powerful. Now I'm going to go ahead and take 32 of them from him and he can just finish up. Um, so this will be a half stack of iron, and it's going to net us three stacks of iron dust, which of course then, uh, you know, we can just smelt in and get iron. So, uh, however we see fit to do that. So very, very powerful. Uh, let's test a couple of things. Isnium should work. Shouldn't be any issues with Isnium. There we go. We got six Isnium dust from one ore. Uh, let's try, gold is going to work. Let's do like silver, and then maybe we'll do copper. Because these are, of course, from different mods. But I think they're from all the ores, so I guess it doesn't really matter. It's the same as the iron. Um, but let's try Ancient Debris. Because that's something I'm not 100% sure about. How he's going to handle that. We do. We get six netherite scrap. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. Okay. So. <laughs> like I said, there is certain things he will not be able to process. I do know that uh, certain things that are still touched won't work with him. Um, also, I think these are like technically smelted. I'm not for sure if they will work. Yeah, you can hear that sound. That means it's not going to work. That one doesn't work. These are smelted. Uh, this one, though, also does not work. Okay. That is fine. Uh, Aquite is also smelted. Okay. Uh, we can still use the ore purification from Elemental Craft. Uh, we can also use mana and artifice, uh, mana and artifice for ore doubling there, uh, stuff that's smelted like that. But yeah, I think for most things like ingots and stuff like that, he should work just fine with those. So. Um, and we're going to be handling stuff that we would normally silk touch, like diamonds and stuff. Uh, come next episode, we're going to be 
I think it'll be next episode. We're going to be uh, getting a way in place to really multiply those and get a whole lot more output from those as well. So now we can also automate him extremely easily. We're going to be doing that here shortly, um, though it is something that does take a little bit of um, upkeep to a degree because when you're dealing with lower tier demons, they do have that decay that you do have to be aware of. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is over here, I've got a little ritual laid out. We're actually going to need a couple gen books real quick. Sorry to feel like I need to get into astral just so I can prevent all these mobs from spawning here. That's something that we'll do before too long. Uh, but let's go ahead and bind one of these and we are going to make ourselves a soul gem for starters. Uh, because we're going to be using that soul gem today to craft ourselves a familiar ring. And this is where, this is when ring slots are going to get really, really tricky to kind of work around because um, we are quickly reaching a point, well, we've already surpassed the point where I don't have enough ring slots and I'm like, uh, what ring to equip? Okay, so there's our soul gem and then we're going to use two gold, two silver and another gin book and we're going to get ourselves a familiar ring. Now, what the familiar ring does is it allows you to bind familiars. And for example, if we go into the section on familiars, you can see there is a lot of familiars. Uh, I do suggest you tab through these because everyone is going to have kind of a different effect that it provides. Um, so having a bunch of these is beneficial. Having a bunch of these in familiar rings is beneficial. Uh, so you can kind of switch them out on the go. I will be making quite a few of these uh, other ones for things like water breathing or night vision. There's there's quite a few different familiars to choose from. And there's a couple ways that you can use these. You can have them out in the world where they follow you around. Uh, which is great, but generally entities following you around, they tend to get stuck or they just randomly vanish in my experience. Uh, familiar ring is kind of an answer to that. In that we can trap those familiars and still get their effects via the familiar ring. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to head down the first familiar that we're going to make. Um, and this is going to be kind of a temporary thing um, as far as the primary use for it. Because come next episode, I do believe we are going to be setting up a way for us to very easily repair anything we want to uh, very, very cheaply. But what we're going to do here is we're going to make ourselves a blacksmith familiar. Uh, so this is a Book of Binding foliat, and it's done within the Hadron's Lure. Uh, but this familiar, even after we don't need it for repairing, it will still be extremely useful because this familiar can be used to upgrade other familiars and make them stronger. Uh, if you take a look here, uh, for example, the Deer Familiar, if you tab over, uh, it says when upgraded by a Blacksmith Familiar, it will attack nearby enemies with a hammer, for example. Now, not all of these are going to have kind of an upgrade necessarily or like a special effect um, but for example this one when upgraded it will be able to find blocks for its master right click it with a block to tell it what to look for and then it's going to look for those blocks and tell you whenever it finds one so it can be useful for um, uh, for mining and stuff like that for example uh, now we need to for this one we need to sacrifice a zombie so that's the purpose of our zombie Right, I'm going to let him get just a little bit closer. There we go. And that is activated our ritual. Yeah, we got slime balls and iron from that one. So this has become kind of my toolbox. Um, is what I've kind of turned it into. So here we go. We're about to get him. There is our blacksmith familiar. And we can tell him to sit, as you can see. Um, and that's going to be useful kind of for upgrading familiars and stuff. You can kind of leave him in the world there. Um... But what we can do is we can take our familiar ring and just right click him, catch them all. And we have a familiar ring occupied by the familiar Relo, Rel or Ikrit. So um, unfortunately you'll notice that it does not tell you what the uh, type of familiar is. It just tells you the name of the familiar. Uh, so you can always name these if you want, uh, or you can add like a lore tag, for example, and that way you can keep up with which familiars you have uh, and kind of keep them accessible uh, to you. Okay, I went ahead and I gathered up uh, a bit of cobblestone. And if we take our fam familiar, let's just set him down. And then 
it's, I think it works fine within the ring. Um, but we should have gotten just a little bit of repair. Actually, I think it went on the scythe. Because um, I did I did check that. I think it was 124. So we got a little bit. Um, it's not super great, as you can see. Uh, but I do suggest that you make this familiar fairly early on. Because a lot of your other ones uh, are going to be able to accept the upgrades. So um, honestly, I probably won't run it. Uh, I was thinking, I was thinking actually that was a little bit better than that. Uh, it would be fun, especially if you had like a cobble gen for easily repairing and freely repairing uh, pretty much everything in your inventory. But it does appear that it would take quite a few stacks uh, in order to actually repair things. So for some reason, I was thinking it was a bit better than that, but uh, that's fine. Like I said, we are going to be setting up something next episode where durability is not going to matter. Uh, really anymore at that point uh, until we can get unbreaking onto every or unbreakable onto everything so but we are going to be making some other familiars for things like water breathing and night vision because it'll just be uh, really really useful to have and now next up we're going to be moving into occultism uh, storage so another really OP feature uh, within the mod uh, familiars really aren't too OP but there's some pretty good effects that you can get out of these um, First up, let's see, Azevius's, is it, uh, yeah, this one's Strigger's Higher Binding. We're going to go ahead and start with this one because we're already at the room for that. Uh, but there's a few things that we are going to have to make. Was it uh, Gen? Yeah, it's Gen. Yeah, because well, yeah, I haven't put everything else in there. It's Quartz Blocks. Boom, boom, boom. And we'll throw that in there and get that running. Um, that is going to make us our... Crystal Matrix. Now we're also going to need Azevius's Spectral Compulsion, which I think we have that. Just got to remember where this one right here. Uh, so we're going to put in that three gold and a foliate book. This will get us our first part of our storage system. Um, we aren't going to have a fully upgraded storage system today because it is a little bit expensive and a little bit time consuming to get it fully upgraded, but uh, we are going to get a start on it. But to actually start into storage, really all you need is this right here, Dimensional Storage Actuator. And to make it, you need the Storage Actuator Base and then just your bound uh, Crystal Matrix. Now in addition, there's a few other things that do help out a lot uh, with your storage system. The first one being Stabilizers. Uh, there's different tiers of them and each one requires a different ritual. I have, I have the rituals set up for the first two, but uh, Severa's Permanent Confinement and you fix this inverted tower. I don't have those set up just yet, but you can see, I mean, they're a little bit expensive. You do have to tier these up. For the tier three, it does require nether star. For the tier four, you do need a dragon head and block of isnium. So we're not quite ready. We could do the nether star, but we're not quite ready to push on to the three and four. And we really don't need the storage at the moment either, um, being realistic. And there's no downside to upgrading after the fact, because even if you fill up your storage, you can break your actuators. Um, and upgrade those so it's no big deal to wait on that um, also in addition there is the wormhole and there is the storage accessor we are going to be making both of these um, also something we haven't talked about is the surprisingly substantial satchel basically a big bag um, there is that um, I might make one down the road but I don't really have a need for it at the moment um, that's more in a situation where you don't have a backpack it's great or in a situation where the storage accessor and storage is a bit more expensive uh, then this would be a bit more beneficial but uh, not a whole lot of need for it for us uh, now while that's running Azevius is spectral compulsion I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, an actuator running because that thing is taking forever to craft successfully bound Jen into the dimensional matrix great Okay, so there is our dimensional matrix. And then we just combine that with our actuator base and we're going to get the dimensional storage actuator. And that's pretty much it. You don't need a big system. Um, you know, it's a lot easier. Uh, that's a lot of the reason it's super OP because it takes no, e no effort and it takes no input. You know, once we have it, it doesn't need power or anything like that. Uh, we are going to be setting this one up right here, I think is where I would like it to go. Um, and that way it's kind of in this little entry room uh, so we can easily access it uh, and it's very available to us that's still taking a minute looks like uh, but if we open this up if we just right click it you can see 
Uh, this is basically the storage layout uh, for this. So if we take and we throw our ender pearl in there, it goes into there. You can see it's one out of 128. Um, you can basically stack items up to, I want to say it's like, what, a thousand? Um, so if I had a thousand ender pearls, that would be fine. But if I went over a thousand, or it might be out of that, I can't remember. But uh, then it bumps up to taking a second slot. And this is the amount of slots you have. Uh, so think of it as 128 slot chest with basically a thousand stack limit per slot. Uh, it's basically the way that it works. Okay, and this is done. I'm going to get another one of these running real quick. And then we'll get right back up there. Um, also, you can craft within here. Um, so just like a crafting grid, uh, this is going to remove items from it. So if you have that and you click that, it goes back into the storage. Uh, you have some sort options here. Uh, you can also sync it with your JEI. So I hit that and it syncs now with occultism. Uh, you also have a couple things here. We're going to get into those a little bit later. Um, but these are related to basically your gen that can um, manage your system for you. But we'll get into that here in just a little bit now also we have these storage stabilizers now these uh, you can set them up basically on all six sides so you can have one above one below and one in each cardinal direction and what they do is they boost the amount of storage available to your dimensional storage uh, so we're going to come out you have to put these a couple blocks away from uh, this little glowy bit the dimensional matrix um, or what would be the dimensional matrix but they don't have to plug up to anything. They don't need any kind of setup. You can just pop them down. And you can now see that we have 384 slots available to this. Now they do have to face in the direction of the, uh, the matrix there. But beyond that, it's really, really straightforward. So you can steadily upgrade these. Once they're fully upgraded, uh, they're gonna give you like over a thousand extra slots, uh, if I recall, per stabilizer. So you can end up having uh, you know, over 6,000 slots available uh, within your storage actuator. So there is kind of a limit, you know, there's really no realistic limit. I mean, there might be a point where it lags too much, but there's not really a limit uh, with something like AE2 or refined storage. With dimensional storage, there is kind of a limit, but just bear in mind that you could easily set up another one of these, uh, and you can even set up ways to interface them together uh, as well. So. Um, I don't know that we will, but because 6,000 item limit is a lot, um, but I don't know, we might, we might, if we decide to use them maybe for our bulk storage or something like that. You know, you can actually fill these up, and that is a, a possibility if you don't have some kind of voiding going on. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and upgrade this using the Strigor's Higher Binding uh, Ritual right up here. Let's go ahead plop that in gonna be two of these gas tier and a block of silver a uh, block of silver would be expensive if it wasn't for the fact that we now have six times or multiplication and now it's super easy we'll go ahead and get that running you'll notice that none of these really take sacrifices so uh, storage system super cheap to set up now while that's crafting let's go ahead and make our stable wormhole and then once that's done we'll, we'll make the uh storage accessor and you do need these inert versions i'm not going to really spend a lot of time on those they're really straightforward to craft uh, but you are going to need these in order to craft uh, the wormholes and the storage accessor now wormhole it's not as powerful and really if you have a storage accessor you don't necessarily ever have to have a wormhole um, because it's kind of like setting up a crafting grid somewhere while you have portable crafting grid you know there's not a whole lot of reason for it however the wormhole actually looks really really cool and we are going to decorate them around in our base in logical places because they do allow us access to uh, our dimensional storage and in addition if you get to the point where you have multiple dimensional storages having a wormhole crafting area uh, in certain key locations could be useful uh, you know or you could even go to the point where you have specific dimensional storages for certain things like one just for metal one for uh, you know blocks kind of how i normally uh, sort out my items early on in a pack you could set it up something like that and then um, you may end up wanting wormholes because carrying a bunch of storage uh accessors would be a little bit cumbersome because each one has to be linked to a very specific 
uh, storage system. So in some cases it might be good, but generally you probably won't need the wormhole much. And there's our wormhole, our wormhole frame. So quest complete. Um, we probably we won't finish up all the quests for this today because we won't get these two stabilizers, and I don't know if we'll make both of these miners. Uh, but I do think we're going to make one miner just to just to do it. Uh, but when it comes to the stable wormhole uh, wormholes and then also the storage accessor, all you have to do is just shift right click. It says link the stable wormhole to this storage actuator. And then if we pop up and let's say we really wanted a storage access here, we can put it up on the wall and there we go. It's connected up to our system. And for example, we got a lot of arrows taking up a lot of chest space. We actually might break into needing a couple of these. Let me clear that out. Um, yeah, you can see right now we're taking up one slot, but as soon as we throw in this, no, it's a little over a thousand. So, no, actually I think it just didn't update. So, yeah, but you can see we have basically two slots, theoretical slots, uh, in this now taken up by arrows. I'm going to throw a few more things in there. So we got 14 uh, slots taken up. We don't have 2,000. Oh, it rounds up. We don't really have 2,000 arrows. We have 1,503. It's just enough to make it round up. All right, is this done? It looks like it is done. There is our Tier 2 stabilizer. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and get our storage accessor laid out real quick. Uh, but anyways, if we come up... Let's add a tier two dimensional storage stabilizer here. And now you can see we have 896. So it bumped us up by 500 for this one. And then I think it's 750 for tier three and a thousand for tier four, if I recall. Um, but also bear in mind that you can put these above them and you can put them below them. Uh, just make sure that they are facing towards the crystal matrix. And I think they have to be within like five blocks, but they have to at least be two blocks away, uh, but within five blocks. But beyond that, there's really no limit to how you set this up. I mean, you're going to have basically the stabilizers around the dimensional storage actuator. Uh, but overall, it's pretty straightforward and it doesn't take any kind of input whatsoever. Uh, the closest thing to input that you're going to have is when it comes to using your gen uh, to take things out of and process things. Uh, there is some limited processing within occultism. Um, however, uh, we're going to be setting up processing through other other uh, methods as well within this pack. Okay, and there is our storage remote or our storage accessor. We're gonna shift right click right there. It says link storage remote to actuator. Uh, so everything now that's in here, if we come over here, we click on it, there it is. It's still accessible. You can see we can still craft in it. Uh, also worth noting is if we go to another dimension, it will still work. And we could even set up wormholes in another dimension and they would still work. So 100% cross dimension support. Um, there's no linking required. There's no, uh, there's no anything. It just, it works, right? So, uh, and we can easily, we can just take and throw things into here while we're mining. Uh, and then if we have stuff set up to take items from it, then we can take the items from it and they'll get processed. And in addition, it pretty much gives us now uh, an endless bag. So this is great. We will still use it, but uh, this is even better, right? All right, now, now that we've got that set up, uh, we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a book of calling for the Foliate Transporter, which is just a chest and a Foliate book. Uh, but then we're also going to get the Summon Foliate for Transporter. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the stuff that we're going to need for this. And as you can see, you can shift click into this. Uh, so just kind of bear that in mind. And your book of calling, you can kind of think of that as like your tool. Uh, your tool that you're going to use kind of to set up your foley at. Uh, but there is Jagtimur. We're going to go ahead and grab him. And we're going to take him upstairs. I'm just going to set him up right here just so he's close to uh, what we're doing here. Or I was thinking they were affected by decay, like the, the ore crusher. But maybe, maybe not. Maybe... Maybe he is not. Interesting, actually. Uh, but let's go ahead. We're going to shift right click to bind him to this book. And then if we just right click here, we can say set deposit or set extract. We're going to say set extract. 
Um, and then we're going to come over and we're going to click our dimensional storage actu actuator. Shift right click. He's now extracting items, but at the moment he's going to just extract everything. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a whitelist here. Oh, and you actually get one of these. See, I've only, like I said, I've only played around with this in survival. I didn't realize that you actually get a book of calling when you conjure your critter. So that's good to know. Uh, but all right, that's fine. Let's go ahead uh, now and we're going to come over. Let's right click. We're going to say set deposit and we are going to just shift right click Jarlam Ward. Okay, so he's now handing over items to Jarlam Ward. And if we set... Yeah, he's going to try to take the arrows. We don't want the arrows to go. Um, now, what about... Let's see. Like, for example, this would go under Forge Ores. So just going with all Forge Ores isn't really going to work. We could do Forge Ores or we could do Forge Ores Iron and just add a whole bunch of tags. But i tell you what, for right now... For example, we're going to just toss in, say, iron ore. Okay, so go ahead and start taking all the iron ore. Uh, we could also just do a couple different transporters. Yeah, that's a little bit problematic, I guess, that gate being there for what I want to do. Uh, but it's going to start taking ores, and it's going to start delivering them to him. And you can see he's just kind of hanging out here right now. He can move a stack at a time, um, and he's going to hang out now until that stack is emptied out. So, um, And it's possible this guy may not wander out of here um, that is very very possible uh, now for just a moment here let's see well I'll just let him run for just a minute uh, but then we need to handle cleanup um, because there's gonna be items everywhere from this guy right uh, so for this what we're going to do is we are going to make ourselves a fully at janitor um, so I guess we're not gonna do this method uh, in that case, we're just going to do this method. I was thinking you had to craft the book and this only summoned it, but uh, that's not the case. And of course, what the janitor does is he just cleans up after everybody else. That's his job. Oh, and if I hadn't crafted this, I would have enough to craft it, but I got to make another book now because I'm out of foliate books. Oh. oh, but I can actually do this a whole lot easier now. Let me just go ahead and do that. Go. And we'll just go ahead and bind this real quick. And I did throw in, you can see I threw in like all my items, uh, or most most everything uh, at this point. So we're actually making use of a lot of the storage. You can see lots of iron dust coming in. Now, right now, we're not actually going to be smelting all of this. So we're not going to be plugging it up today for smelting. And the reason being, uh, it wouldn't be any real big issue. Um, all you'd have to do is have, you know, for example, a transporter foliate, then take uh, the items to a chest or to a furnace. Or you could do the gen machine operators which are quite nice they're good if you want something that you can manually craft but you're not really keeping stocked um, it's good for that it doesn't really work super well with like recursive crafting um, it doesn't really work well with that and that's where things like batania and blood magic nodes uh, you know batania corporea that's kind of stuff is going to come into play because it works better with recursive crafting and actually bringing the whole system together uh, but occultism works great for stuff that you're just going to kind of be manually requesting. Um, it also works well for just bulk storage. You know, those parts of setting up a proper system. Uh, yeah, so we get our Book of Calling. By the way, you can carry these in your books, but uh, just like a soul gem. But we're going to click here. We're going to say set base location. Uh, we're going to set this to like 16 by 16. And we're going to then shift, right click right there. So that's his base. That's where he's going to hang out now. And then we're going to just right click. We're going to say set deposit, shift right click there. Okay, so now he is going to start grabbing the iron that gets thrown down. Now, I'm, I'm mixing them up. I need to put these away. Uh, we have the foliate transporter. You need to be handing your items over to him. You need to be depositing your items into there. And then we're going to set him to whitelist. Uh, or we could just use a, a tag here. Uh, the tag for dust would be uh, forge-dust. Uh, so let's do like that. 
and that is going to be your whitelist, Mr. Janitor. Yeah, you can see he just grabbed some that the the guy threw down, and we're just going to take and toss all that in. And yeah, I was thinking these guys had decay, but if they don't, that's even better. It may be a config, it may be a config thing, or it might just be all the time they don't have decay. Um, and if so, that's even better. That's even better for us. So this guy is going to collect all the dust that gets dropped. This guy is going to take the dust over there and feed them to him. And, you know, we can add, uh, for example, we want to do gold. We want to do isnium. We want to do uh, silver. We want to do lead and copper. I don't know if he's got enough slots for that. Uh, we can always add stuff into here as well, though. Uh, but we can also set up additional transporters also, so uh, that's an option as well. But for right now, we actually have enough slots, um, I think, for everything that I want to have him handle. He's got 52, and he has now gone to gold, so uh, once that runs down. Now, once again, we could have them smelt this if we wanted to, um, either through the machine operator or we could do it through the transporter. Uh, however, we're not going to do that. Uh, the machine operator, we'll get into that a little bit later because that's what this and that's what this is for. Uh, but we don't need it at the moment. That's Like I said, that's more manual requests and ore is something that we would want automated. But we're going to be setting up here shortly. I'm only going to smelt as, as few ores as we need because you might be thinking, well, six times multiplication, it can't get any better than that, but it can. Uh, we're actually going to then be, everything that he can process, we're then going to be uh, doing 12 times or processing. <laughs> so already far better than mechanism, you know, could ever be. Uh, so we're going to be doing 12 times multiplication because we'll be doing it in a few episodes. But what you do is then you take like the Isnium dust and the Ion dust and you run it through Man and Artifice forges, which then double the output on the dust. Uh, so we'll be getting, for example, one iron ore, we'll get 12 ingots from that. Uh, which is massive. There are a few mods that, that can do better, but uh, for the most part, that's going to be the best possible thing in most packs, and definitely the best possible, I think, uh, within here. So, 12 times multiplication. But, at least this way, we'll have everything broken down into dust, so then we can just get our rune forges set up a little bit later. And the crystals, it's all super straightforward and upfront with Man and Artifice, uh, so we'll kind of push onto that very, very quickly. Looks like they finally ran through all of our dust. You can see we got a lot of materials here, 2,688 iron, and then double that, we're gonna have over 5,000 iron once we set up for our six, our 12 times or multiplication. So we'll be good on iron for a bit. And of course that was all manual mined as well. Now the last thing that we're going to do today is we are going to set up, I'm not gonna leave it set up, uh, but we are going to make a gen miner. Uh, now there is, if you take a look here, there is a couple different miners available. Um, I don't know if it's... Oh, you get other stone? Okay, I didn't realize you get other stone. Uh, but yeah, it does detail it here. Uh, the miner foliate and the gen miner. Uh, the difference is the gen miner, of course, is going to be faster. It's going to have uh, more durability. And in addition, it only gets ores and other stone. I didn't realize that it got other stone. Uh, while the foliate miner does get stuff like, uh, what, mossy stone and cobblestone and andesite and diorite, those kind of things, it gets those as well. Uh, ideally, you would probably want both, at least me personally, so that we could get andesite and diorite and all that other stuff coming in that we will want, uh, you know, for decorating and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not personally going to be running one of these gin, I just want to set one up. Uh, or I'm not going to be running one just yet. We will long term. Uh, but not just yet because I do like mining. Um, and I feel like it takes a lot of way to get a void miner too quickly. But these do have a durability. That's worth mentioning. But they are enchantable. Uh, so you can put something like Unbreaking 3 on there. You could put Mending. Uh, you can also run it through like the Blood Chest or any kind of durability repair. When we start running it, depending on when we start running it, we're either going to go for Unbreakable uh, with the Eternal Stella. Uh, if we have everything, because I, if I recall, the Eternal Stella takes a bunch of metals that uh, we're not going to have just yet. 
we've got the Isnium, but we would need the Star Metal and the Unarith, um, Ingot of the Skies, and Terra Steel. Actually, most of this is pretty quick, um, and all stuff that I am planning on going for fairly quickly, um, for various different reasons. So, it's pretty much these three and just exploring the Abyss. So, yeah, we will actually probably have the Eternal Stella, so we might just make it unbreakable by the time that we actually use it. But if not, then, uh, you know, we can have it basically filtered around so it gets repaired by, say, a blood chest anytime the durability gets low. And then it's kind of, you know, it's, a, it's an infinite miner um, that takes no power or anything like that. So, and of course you could make a bunch of these and have a bunch of ores coming in. And then of course, most of those ores getting six times processed and then 12 times processed, uh, are coming out to be 12 times processed for basically endless materials. But I figured we would cover the miner today, at least set one up. So if you guys have any questions about it, this should answer it. Uh, basically to set up the miner, you are going to need a dimensional mine shaft and you are going to need, uh, you know, a minor foliate or an ore minor gin. One of these lamps here. Uh, I'm going to be using a hopper. You don't have to be. Um, long term, we actually probably won't be. Uh, but just for our example today, I think, um, well, yeah, there's really no point in doing this. I don't think. Because whenever we set it up for proper automation, we're going to be using a transporter. It's got an internal buffer. I can't remember how many slots it has, but it does have an internal buffer. So I think just a transporter should work fine. Because uh, I'm just planning on having them set up on the opposite side of the room from the storage system. So that should be sufficient. Uh, for the gen miner, it is these six things. So uh, this is basically where all, all of our isnium comes into play. I did have to smelt just a little bit of the dust uh, to have enough for this, but uh, not a whole lot. And we're going to let that run. Now the dimensional mine shaft, uh, we can set this up pretty much anywhere. Um, I'm thinking we're going to have it kind of on something over in here maybe. Uh, but if we open this up, you will see that there is some slots over here. This is actually the storage, so it's nine slots, uh, nine different items that it can store up to a stack of uh, before it fills up. So the transporter fully out will be able to easily empty this and just move it over. Uh, so we're not going to worry about actually adding additional storage underneath it. And then right here is where we're going to put our gin lamp in, or our foliate lamp, if the case may be. Uh, and then the, this, of course, is just a progress bar. And so once it runs down, it takes durability, and it gives us ore. And there we go. There is our gin magic lamp. Uh, but if this runs for just a moment, you can see it's decently fast. And if you wanted, to, if you needed a lot of ores coming in, just scale out because you know there's no there's no overhead and especially if you're going with like fully unbreakable it's literally nothing just put an eternal stella on there uh, but you could say 400 durability okay uh you can see that we did get some coal ore there and it runs down again and we're going to get another ore in this case inferior ore uh, but for right now it's going to go on a shelf because i don't uh i don't personally want to use it just yet so I enjoy mining and uh, we're going to be pushing on for some really nice nifty new pickaxes before long and kind of tossing Tetra by the roadside at that point as well. But as far as like straight up occultism focus, this is our last episode for that. So anyways, on that note, I know it's past wrapping up points, a little bit longer of an episode, but uh, we had a little bit to cover to kind of wrap up things. Now, next episode, we are going to be focusing on some gearing up. Uh, as well as kind of some short little miscellaneous things. We're going to do a little bit of evil craft. We may do just a little bit of mana and artifice. We're also going to be doing a little bit with apotheosis. Because uh, I want a new weapon. A weapon that can uh, that can deal some damage. Some really decent damage within this dimension. Uh, so we're going to be doing that as well. Um, as well as just making a weapon that's really powerful in the overworld as well. So I hope you guys join me for that. And uh, we may get our 12 times ore processing up and going as well uh, come next episode. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Depends on how much time we have. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.